Hey, I'm Monty, and today I'm going to be playing Three Hours of Among Us. So, Did first... Did I just hear you say you're playing Among Us? Uh, Wait, are you recording this? Uh, maybe. Oh, Monty. Hey guys, I'm Shalisha. And I'm Monty. Today we are in week two of our series, Thankful. Wow, we are still talking about being thankful? You know what? I looked it up. There are 20 Bible verses about thankfulness, and that means if we're in week two now, we'll be in the series for another 18 weeks. No, 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 we aren't talking about each Bible verse individually. We'll learn all about thankfulness for just this month. Oh, phew. So Monty, what are you thankful for? You're gonna say pizza, aren't you? Oh, New York style pizza. Oh, the cheese, the sauce, okay, the cheese stuff okay. crust. Oh. Hello, Monty. Oh, I think I passed out for a second. Um, so what about you? No, I'm really thankful for family and not just the people I'm related to, like my brothers or sisters or my mom, but also my friends and church leaders. I'm so thankful that God has placed some really amazing people in my life. Oh yeah, I'm thankful for family too. I think I'm gonna change my answer to family, but I'm still really thankful for pizza. Oh, oh pizza. man, not again, snap oh. out of it, Monty. What, what, what just happened? Oh, hey, Monty, do you remember our big picture question? You bet I do. It's when should we tell others about Jesus? That's right. All right, well, it's time for worship. Wait, wait, we need to pray. That's right. I'm thankful that you reminded me. I see what you did there. No, that wasn't funny. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so excited to learn about you today. I pray that our hearts will be open to everything you want to teach us. We love you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. for all that you've done. to be where you are.
All right. Hello and welcome back to another Our Kids Game Time. My name's Bree. My name is Sam. We're excited to have y'all back here today. Woohoo! Today we're gonna do a stretchy pants, pants challenge. challenge. Sam, can you go ahead and explain our game today? Of course I can, Bree. All right. So, what's one thing that you just love to eat during the season? Pie. Pie. And what's one necessity of pie, like when you eat it? Stretchy pants. I don't know about y'all, but when I go to eat my pie, I need pants that can support my legs afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes straight through. Come on. So Straight to the legs. We have a bunch of balloons up here representing slices of pie. We got our cherry, our little pecan, pumpkin, blueberry, and what we're gonna do is blow up each balloon and put them in our stretchy pants. The so challenge represent is. a piece of pie. Go into the legs. Come All on. right. Bree, are you ready? I am so ready. Let's go. Count us down. All right. Three, two, one. Go. <laughs> a little bigger. Oh. Uh -uh. My cats aren't that big. <laughs> <laughs> let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Come on, who's Team Sam today? Who's Team Sam? Nope, Team Bree all the way uh, every day. Uh, we can take her. <laughs> My blueberry tie out here. Judges who won the <laughs> challenge. Bree! Bree! Yay! I got five pieces of pie. <laughs> I guess these pieces of pie don't count because I didn't chew them. Always right. chew your food. How many before did you, you get? Smoke. You had four or three? I had one, two, three, four, five, four, four balloons. Four. I got one more yes. piece of pie than me. I'm sorry. How are you feeling, Bree? Stuffed. Come on. Honestly. <laughs> what about you? I'm so bloated. I gotta go run this off. All righty. Well, while he's going for his run, we will see you guys next week for our next Our Kids Game Time. All right, friends, it's time to go over our Bible memory verse. Let's say it together. Are you ready? Philippians 2.21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. All right, we're gonna say it again, but this time we're gonna have a race to see who can say it the fastest. If I say it the fastest, I get a piece of candy. If you say it the fastest, I still get a piece of candy. You guys ready? Here we go. Philippians 2.21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Whew, that was really tough, but I know you guys did a great job. Keep practicing your memory verse, and I'll see you again next time. Oh. Paul had narrowly escaped death in Jerusalem. Oh. The Jews planned to kill Paul, but the Roman soldiers took him away to Caesarea, where he would be safe. However, Paul was still a prisoner. The Roman leaders wanted to figure out why the Jews hated Paul so much, so Paul met with rulers to try to explain what was going on. First, 
Paul met with Felix, the governor. Felix knew what Paul believed about Jesus, and he agreed to listen to him. Felix ordered the Roman guard to watch Paul, but to also give him some freedom by letting Paul's friends come and serve him. A few days later, Felix and his wife came for a meeting with Paul. Paul talked about faith in Jesus. He talked about righteousness and self-control, and he explained that one day, God is going to judge the world. Felix was afraid of what Paul said. He sent Paul away, but he met with him many times for the next two years. When a new governor came into power, Felix did not release Paul from prison. The new governor was named Festus. He traveled to Jerusalem to meet with the Jewish leaders. The Jewish leaders asked for Festus to bring Paul to Jerusalem. They were still planning to attack Paul and kill him. But Festus wanted Paul to stay in Caesarea. He invited some of the Jewish leaders to go with him to see Paul. Paul stood before Festus. I have not done anything wrong, Paul explained again. If I have done something that deserves death, then I will die. But these men can prove nothing. I want to see Caesar. Caesar was the emperor of Rome. And as a Roman citizen, Paul had the right to take his case to him. Festus agreed. While Paul was waiting to go to Rome, King Agrippa and Queen Bernice visited with Festus and Paul. Paul told the king how he became a believer. He explained that Jesus died to bring salvation to Jews and Gentiles. Paul, you are out of your mind, Festus said. No, Paul said, I am speaking the truth. I wish you and everyone who is listening might believe in Jesus. King Agrippa, Festus, and the others with them got up. They agreed that Paul had done nothing wrong. The king was ready to free Paul, but Paul had already asked to go to Rome. God had chosen Paul to take the gospel to Gentiles, kings, and the Israelites. Paul met with people again and again to tell the good news about Jesus. He wanted everyone to believe that Jesus is Lord because Jesus has the power to save people from sin. Paul was willing to do whatever it took to share the gospel. Hey everyone, Alex here, and we're back to talk about Paul. Today we learned from our Bible story that Paul preached about Jesus to governors and kings. Last week, we learned that Paul was saved from dying by being arrested and taken to Caesarea. While he was in Caesarea, Paul met with three different leaders and had the chance to teach each of them about God. The first was Felix. For two years, Felix met with Paul, but he never decided if Paul was guilty of a crime or not. When Felix's time as governor was over, Felix did not let Paul go free. He left Paul in prison. The next governor was named Festus. The Jews wanted Festus to bring Paul to Jerusalem so they could kill him. But instead, Festus went to visit Paul. Then Paul met with a third leader, King Agrippa. Paul explained to the king why he had been arrested, and Paul told him about Jesus. King Agrippa thought Paul was crazy, but he agreed that Paul was not a criminal. King Agrippa was ready to set Paul free, but Paul had already asked to go to Rome, so the king was responsible to get him there. Have you ever worked on a thousand piece puzzle? I happen to have one here. All the pieces are here, I'm pretty sure, but what I'm missing is the box. I don't know how I'm gonna put this puzzle together without knowing what it's supposed to look like in the end. I'm sure there are some parts that will be easy, like putting the edges together. I could probably do that without the box. I could maybe find some of the same colors and eventually work out how they go together. But it's gonna be really hard when I can't see the big picture of this puzzle. You know, God often works in ways we do not expect. So many times in our lives, God is putting together the pieces of our lives and allows certain things to happen that we may not understand. But we can trust that God can see the big picture of our lives and he's putting us together little by little to create a beautiful story for each of us. 
God had told Paul in a dream that he would go to Rome. Now God was keeping his promise in an unexpected way. I'm sure Paul had no idea why God allowed him to be put in prison and threatened with death for so many years when he hadn't done anything wrong. God had chosen Paul to take the gospel to Gentiles, kings, and the Israelites, and God was true to what he said. Boys and girls, when God makes a promise in your life, you can trust that God will keep his promise. Even if everything in your life seems wrong, God is putting together the puzzle of your life, and even though we can't see the big picture, we can trust that God does, and he knows what he's doing. Paul never would have been able to share the gospel and trust God the way he did if he didn't have a personal relationship with him. If you haven't started your relationship with God, you can start it right now. All you have to do is to ask God to forgive you of your sins, believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for you and rose again, and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you are saved. It's so easy for us to join God's family because he made the way for us. So I want you to repeat this prayer after me and really mean it in your heart. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and have made bad choices. I'm sorry for all of my sins. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and I believe that you are alive today. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my life today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Guys, that's awesome. That's the most important decision you'll ever make and I'm so excited for you. Make sure you tell a parent or a trusted adult about your decision and have them text the word KID, K-I-D, to 313131. We have a very special gift we want to send you. Hey, we're back. At the start of today's video, we asked a big picture question. When should I tell others about Jesus? And it's time for the big picture answer. We should always tell others about Jesus, even when it's difficult. Does that mean when I'm running in the park and I'm out of breath, I still need to tell everyone I pass about Jesus, even though I can't breathe? Well, kinda. It means that we listen to God when He asks us to tell someone who Jesus is, even if we don't know exactly what to say. Oh, that makes more sense. Well, friends, that's all we have for you today. Make sure you come back next week for another Redeemer Kids Online. Bye. Bye.